As you know, th thanks very much for coming. As you know, this morning I hosted in this room uh, my Chinese counterpart, Wang Yi, for the Foreign and Strategic Dialogue. Uh, a stable relationship between Australia and China doesn't just happen, it needs ongoing work. And this was the latest meeting in that process. As Minister Wang reflected in our meeting, it is both in both our interests that we have a mature and productive relationship. We discussed a we discussed a range of shared interests and the progress we have made on outcomes agreed at the sixth Foreign and Strategic Dialogue, including the recommencement of the bilateral annual leaders' meeting. Uh, the Prime Minister looks forward to welcoming Premier Lee to Australia. I'm pleased uh, that this is on track and we agreed on work to prepare for that meeting. We agree to continue bilateral engagements on issues including consular cases, defence and trade, and to expand dialogue in key areas of importance such as the Pacific, climate and energy cooperation, uh, and enhancing, to under, uh, enhance understanding and transparency. The meeting was an opportunity for uh, both uh, the Minister and I to exchange frank views on issues that matter to us. We discussed the sentencing of Dr Yang Jun. I told the foreign, uh, the foreign Minister Australians were shocked at the sentence imposed, and I made clear to him that the Australian Government will continue to advocate on Dr Young's behalf. I also raised our concerns about other Australian death penalty cases. As you know, Australia uh, opposes the death penalty in all circumstances for all peoples. I welcome the progress of the removal of trade impediments on barley, wine and other exports and again reiterated our desire for the removal of remaining impediments on beef and lobster. Uh, we discussed recent volatility in uh, nickel markets and I made the point that predictability in business and trade is in all our economic interests. As you would expect, I raised Australia's concerns about human rights including, including in Xinjiang, Tibet and Hong Kong. I expressed our concern, our serious concern about unsafe conduct at sea, uh, our desire for peace and stability across the Taiwan Strait and in our region. I reflected the review of our region as outlined again and underscored again at the recent ASEAN summit about the importance of the South China Sea being governed by international law, particularly UNCLOS. Uh, obviously, uh, these topics underline that we do have important differences. Uh, dialogue enables us to manage our differences. It doesn't eliminate them. Uh, but this government, in the interests of Australia, uh, will always seek to manage those differences wisely. As I said in the outset of my meeting, China will always be China. Australia will always be Australia. Uh, however, we want to continue to engage, uh, to cooperate where we can and disagree where we must, and to manage these differences wisely. I understand that there's been arrangements made uh, to structure this media conference with the international media. We might adopt this in Australia. But the first question I might go to is from the Australian, Mr Packham. Uh, thank you, Minister. Um, we learned today that um, uh, the government has now dropped its anti-dumping action against Chinese wind turbines. Um, the Global Times says uh, this shows Australia's distancing itself from the anti-China position of the US. Is this a quid pro quo? And um, what, uh, could you update us on the latest on wine, beef and lobster? Uh, and will the government also adopt a softer position on China's bid to enter the CPTPP? Uh, in relation to the last part of the question, there's been no change to the position I've outlined previously. In relation to the, the assertion of uh, the, the, po the earlier points you made, uh, there's no relationship uh, between uh, the wine dispute and the steel disputes. Obviously, the wine issue has been dealt with through our, the WTO processes and uh, associated negotiations. Minister Husick has made uh, uh, a, an evidence ba uh, ba has made a decision based on the apolitical and evidence-based recommendation from the anti-dumping commissioner, uh, and Australia has made clear the independence of that commission and our trade remedy system. Uh, the, uh, uh, as you know, there's an interim decision on wine. We look forward uh, to the 
uh, timetable uh, that has been outlined for the Chinese for that final by the Chinese side for the final decision on wine, and we can continue to express our view as I have since I uh, became foreign minister that we believe it's in the interests of both nations for all trade impediments to be removed. Thank you. Uh, Phoenix TV, Lee Yiming. Hello. On behalf of uh, George Young from Phoenix Satellite TV, um, many Chinese people believe that the bottleneck in Australia-China relations lies in Australia's lack of trust in China. Um, what kind of threat do you think China will pose to Australia? Um, Australia and China have large trade relations and go well, but there are many restrictions on science, technology and ed education. I would like to ask, uh, in such an uh, atmosphere, do Australia-China re relations only seek uncertainty rather than development? Thank you. Well, the first point I'd make is uh, I think stability is a good thing. Uh, uh, and we seek a, a stable and productive and mature relationship with China. Uh, this is you know, consistent with what we have said. Uh, the Prime Minister Albanese and Premier Lee have reiterated the importance of a stable and constructive bilateral relationship. And I think it's important for us to recognise how much progress we have made in a short period of time. We've resumed the foreign and strategic dialogue and the annual leaders meeting. This is really important. Uh, as I said, Australia will continue to be Australia. China will continue to be China. Uh, we are bound by geography, by history, by our peoples, by our trade. Uh, we, we know that there are differences uh, that arise out of who we are and we want to manage them wisely. Uh, we've uh, resumed trade talks and economic talks. We have consultations on consular issues, defence and climate. We've commenced technical cooperation on climate-related matters and our police uh, work together to counter narcotics traf trafficking and transnational crime. Uh, we've welcomed the Education Minister here to Canberra and now the Foreign Minister. So there's been a lot of progress in the relationship uh, in a short space of time and uh, that is a good thing uh, and we'll continue to uh, engage. Uh, we think it's in our national interest to engage, just as there, there, there will be issues on where, where we cooperate and issues where we can disagree. Sorry. Chloe Burris from Network 10. Chloe. Thank you. So you mentioned that you continue to advocate for Dr Young. Can you just clarify what exactly are you advocating for? Is it for the death sentence to be lifted or is it you know, for him to be allowed to return home? And Obviously, you discuss quite a range of topics and on a very different tone. Um, I have to ask, as a South Australian, will Adelaide Zoo continue to have pandas <laughs> for years to come? Firstly, in relation to Dr Young, uh, I, uh, we will continue to advocate uh, on his behalf. Uh, and I reiterated um, the, the, that Australians found the sentence imposed uh, shocking. Uh, I don't propose to outline every aspect of what we put on Dr Young's behalf uh, in the media, but I would say to you, uh, I did want, I did, uh, as I told the media I would when the sentence was handed down, that we, we will not walk away from our advocacy for Dr Young John. Uh, on the pandas, uh, there's obviously further arrangements to be finalised, but I think, uh, I think the uh, uh, news of uh, the, the likely continuation of panda presence in the Adelaide Zoo has, has been reported and I, do, I did say to the Foreign Minister that my children would be very pleased. There's further arrangements for, to, to, to be put in place but uh, I think we're, 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 we're on a good path there to continued panda presence. Um, yeah, Jeff yeah, Jehua. Oh. From TVB? Yes, good afternoon. So uh, this morning, Foreign Minister Wang Yi mentioned China will announce the decision on the Australia wine tariff in May. So may I ask how impactful you expect it to be uh, on the wine industry as well as the economy of uh, Australia? Another concern will be uh, lifting the trade restriction on lobsters. So may I ask what's the progress about it so far? Thank you. Sure. <coughs> Well, we, we think um, it's very, you know, we're very proud of our wine and our lobster and our beef, and uh, we think Chinese consumers would benefit from making, uh, from, from those, all of those products having uh, 
access to the Chinese market without any impediments. That's been the position we've put for some time, as I said uh, to your colleague earlier on why we welcome the interim decision. We look forward to a final decision. Uh, uh, as a South Australian, I'm particularly in, interested in ensuring uh, that we, we uh, get access uh, for uh, our fantastic Australian wine uh, and also lobster, which I know is something that uh, is enjoyed um, by all. Uh, we will continue to advocate for all impediments to be removed. We think it's in both countries' interests. Sorry, did I miss any part of your question? How about the lobster? Is there any progress so far? Uh, well, uh, uh, I think that's probably a question to um, uh, the Chinese authorities. Uh, we've continued to press for um, the all impediments, including relation to lobster, to be removed. But uh, uh, obviously, uh, we look forward to, to that occurring. Okay, Matthew. Uh, Mr. Wong, uh, Donald Trump this morning was asked about past criticisms that Kevin Rudd, uh, Australia's ambassador to Washington, had made of him. Uh, and Trump replied, uh, I heard he was a little bit nasty. I hear he's not the brightest bulb, but I don't know much about him. But if he's at all hostile, he will not be there long. Uh, does this show that it was a mistake or at least very risky for the government to appoint uh, Kevin Rudd as ambassador, given his comments were well known? and Donald Trump had already declared his candidacy at the time? And secondly, uh, will the government keep uh, Kevin Rudd as ambassador if Donald Trump returns to the White House? Uh, uh, in relation to the latter, the answer is yes. In relation to the former, what I'd say is this. Even Mr Dutton uh, has expressed confidence uh, in Mr Rudd. Uh, Mr Rudd is a very effective ambassador. He is recognised uh, as doing across this parliament is doing parliament is doing an excellent job in advancing Australia's interest in the United States and I'd point you in particular to the phenomenal amount of work which has been done uh, on AUKUS in the period that he's been ambassador uh, he's been extremely active uh, in engaging with members of Congress on both sides of politics uh, and uh, he is you know, a former prime minister a former foreign minister uh, his experience and skills mean he will be able to work closely with whomever is elected by the Australian, by the American people as the United States President. Uh, Wong Shaw from CCTV. Uh, this is Shaw Wong from CCTV. Thank you for having me here. Uh, so my first question is, what are the major consensus that Australia and China reached today after the meeting with Mr Wang Yi, and what are they Specific measures to both sides agree to further uh, strengthen the relationship between Australia and China. And my second question is actually regarding to last week when you were at the AFR Business Summit 2024. I was there as well. Okay. So I remember the keyword you also just mentioned stabilize, uh, stabilization. So besides this keyword, I'm wondering do you have any other keyword on your mind now after the <laughs> meeting with him today? Uh, yeah, so thank you. Uh, well, look, I've, I've gone through some of the um, points that were discussed in the meeting, and I, I would make the point that we were pleased uh, that we are on track for a Premier Lee visit. And one of the uh, important things that uh, we did agree was to ensure that both sides work together to prepare for a visit, uh, which in the Prime Minister is looking very much forward to welcoming the Premier here. Uh, those high-level visits and high-level engagements are a very important part of the relationship. Uh, they enable the face-to-face -face discussion. Uh, is uh, it, it, it's not just you know, having a discussion. It's actually understanding where both sides are coming from. It's important for uh, to to have that that ballast and stability in the relationship. Uh, as I said, uh, we obviously want a productive relationship with China. We obviously want a mature relationship with China. I think that is shared. Uh, I think that is shared. So uh, I, I'm very pleased that the Foreign Minister made time to come to Australia. I know he has a punishing schedule. Uh, and I look forward uh, to the next foreign and strategic dialogue uh, in China. Uh, um, I did express to him that this time we might not try and go in the middle of the Beijing winter because that was quite quite chilly, which I'm sure some of the travelling media will be happy with. Thank you very much.